Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. As today we get to the bottom of this mysterious tower. Speaking of which, I was actually just running rings around this tower off screen, and it turns out that uh, we have a basement access button right here, which apparently only appears when you have guiding light equipped. Yeah, yeah, that's the same room we were just in last time. That's pretty fun. As always, I am impressed by their foresight to include multiple paths. Though, sadly, I'll also note, um, as far as I could tell, there was nothing else that the Guiding Light revealed. So at this point, it is essentially a glorified souvenir. Though, were this a full-fledged campaign... That is the kind of uh, fun discovery that might encourage players to come back to a place to claim it as their own. Oh, dear. What vile discovery is this? I think they uh, accidentally layered two tables on top of each other. Ooh, more basilisk oil. That's three vials now. Not to mention an assortment of useful scrolls. Though nothing new as far as lore objects go. We've read all of these. Yeah. Oh. I've glimpsed a chest. And the Staff of Arcane Blessing. Magic Staff with... Mistra's Blessing. Bless grants an additional plus 1d4 to savings throws and weapon attack rolls, and an additional 2d4 to spell attack rolls. Though dust has settled into every nook and cranny of this staff, it still emanates a soothing aura. Its previous owner cast it aside, forgotten because there was nobody to bless. Oh, depressing. Thanks for that. Though I do appreciate that it fits the theme, I suppose. Of Lenore the Lonely Cleric. Whose final fate we have still yet to discover. Bolette, perhaps, but that's just speculation for the time being. Hearst's Diary. Fantastic. Plus a modest assortment of riches and the Sparks Wall, which grants immunity to electrocuted and resistance to lightning. When the inventor Yur met the cleric Lenore, Sparks flew. Apart, they were in a rut, but together they inspired each other to push the boundaries of innovation and invention. This ring is just one of their many scientific triumphs. That's actually not bad at all. Basic immunities and resistances are always a welcome addition, regardless of build. I suppose that would also make it slightly easier to get some use out of all those other various you're the spark struck items that we've accumulated. The, uh, the Electro Boots in particular. An open letter on oppression and peacocks. Oh, I think we... Yeah, yeah, we found this on um, the dead caravanners, the one slaughtered by the gnolls. By R. Pickens. Okay. Just had to double check. Wanted to make sure it wasn't submitted by Yur or Lenore. That's enough to make a tadpole elixir.
Round flask, worth 30 gold. Excavation of the Enclave of Naloth. And that might be it. The door over there is the alternate entrance, so... Yeah, yeah, I think that's a pretty clean sweep. Alright, let's um, give these last two books a gander. See what else we might glean. A carefully kept journal, filled with concise prose and technical diagrams of a lost... Once submerged city. Elminster said Naloth was a wonder to behold when it floated in Faerun's sky. He was surely right. This Netherese enclave was once a jewel in the empire of magic, with towers that pierced the heavens. And yet it fell, just as all Netherese enclaves did. Crashing down when Carsus's folly ripped magic from the world. But even after it collapsed into the sea... Its ruins still held a strange, twisted beauty. I traveled here from Halrua when I heard the sea had retreated, and the ruins of Naloth were visible once again. Alas, I was not the first. Looters have stripped the enclave of its material wealth, destroying much of its esoteric riches in the process. I found arcane books used to make campfires, their magic lost now to the ages. I have met some Shadowvar here whose interests align with mine. And we have agreed to search the ruins together. The ruins are mostly filled with thick-skulled adventurers. But I cannot shake the feeling that someone is watching us. Waiting to see what we uncover. Interesting, though. Again, I am hard-pressed to imagine how this actually relates to anything we're currently doing. Remnants from Karsus' folly, perhaps something related to Gale? Alright, well, we'll, uh, we'll file that away in the old brain bank, I guess. And move on to Dehurst's Diary. The otherwise plain book has the words L. Dehurst and Diary written on the front in faded silver ink. Crisp cursive fills the pages of the diary, detailing the daily struggles of a cleric of Mistra studying the magical properties of the Underdark. The last entry dates back about ten years. Oh, ten years ago. We finally got a timeline. Second of Alturiac, 1481, DR. Who would have thought three years ago that I would start a diary? Not a research journal, but a, a real diary. I guess when every soul is more like to kill you than converse with you, talking to a book starts making sense. And who would have thought three years ago that I would be called back to Baldur's Gate to confer with my sisters right at the apex of my studies? I have all the pieces, but I have barely started my treatise. No matter, I will take my ring with me to show them a glimpse of the possibilities. I will leave you, my dear book, here, together with the rest of my research, waiting to be finished. I should be back before next chess. LDH Lenore de Hurst. Interesting. Okay, so... So the stray bullet was just a... A tangent. It would appear that whatever final fate befell Miss de Hurst was... Was in fact in Baldur's Gate. Which we just happen to know is where Act 3 takes place, so... So we may not be done with this story after all. Oh, I really hope they got a happy ending. I mean, we barely know them, but, you know, still, it would be nice to have an actual feel-good ending in this world of perpetual blood, gore, and grimdark. But, you know, I'm not going to hold my breath. The various items we found haven't exactly painted a picture of a rosy reunion at any point. Let's whittle down this pile a little. Letter. An affectionate letter. Probably. This was on one of the dead flaming fists inside Joaquin's rest. Hey, idiot. You left a snot rag on my kitchen table. I haven't thrown it out yet. 
A lot of times I want to push you into a pit of snakes, but sometimes you say something so stupid and funny I think about it for days. Don't panic. Let's talk when you're home. Be safe out there. Rhea. And once again, right back into the realms of depression. Thanks, BG3. Uh, I mean, obviously not exactly the most poignant prose, but... But still, an added level of pathos to a random corpse. A small bit of extra misery to an already miserable scene. Now let's lighten the mood a little with... Fables of Faerun, Volume 2. The Daring Dwergar. In the deep city of Gracklestug lived a young Dwergar named Shull, who could conjure eerie whispers in his brother's minds. Eager to develop his psionic powers and take over his clan, he asked the godfather who could teach him further. Cross the Dark Lake. On the south shore there is a chasm, said the godfather. Within the chasm lives a rogue mind flayer called Ear. It will teach you all you must know. Shull's voyage was fraught with danger. He fended off aboleths and cloakers alike until he reached the Mind Flayer's chasm. Ear emerged from its hovel, tentacles writhing. I am here to learn, Shull told it. Very well, came the response. On the first moon's passing, Ear taught Shull how to read minds. On the second, it taught Shull how to bend them. But this was not enough for Shull. He wanted to destroy minds with a mere word. So be it, said Ear, and it bestowed a blessing on Shull. It is yours, the knowledge to shatter a single mind. But you may only speak the command once, Ear told Shull, for then it is forever forgotten. Ready to assume control of his clan, Shull returned to Gracklestug. Show me what you have learned, the godfather told Shull. Shull grinned, spoke the command, and his own skull shattered before the godfather's eyes, said the godfather. The lesson is complete. Kind of easy to see that twist coming, but... But... I'm always down for a good fable, and it's not like most of those are terribly subtle. Pretty basic moral lesson there. Seek not to destroy lest ye destroy yourself, or don't bite off more than you can chew. Um, okay, I think we're done with lore books for now. Let's hit the pause button for a moment. I'm going to give this place one last pass, and then it may be time to move on. And we're back. And yeah, yeah, I think we are well and truly done with the tower, at least for now. I pop back through, check for any scenes or new sights to see in the wake of what we discovered down below. But nothing. Still have no idea what that button under the doggy window does, but... Um, we'll just set our sights on the decrepit village for now. I did notice, though, in uh, reviewing the lore from the past couple of episodes that... Um, I don't think we've actually found where she buried poor Myrna. The letter she received very specifically mentioned laying Autumn Crocus on the grave. And although we did encounter the bullet, we did not discover any signs of a grave. So perhaps there's something further into the fungal patch. Oh, I hate that. My goodness, I'm not tryptophobic. That would be a nightmare. No, no, I've just got all the other classics. Acrophobia, claustrophobia, the lassophobia. A camp. Looks like it's been sitting empty a while. Yeah, I'm gonna say that might have something to do with this rocky honeycomb we are currently surveying. Oh yeah, look at that. We've got obvious signs of combat. Pools of blood scattered about in the main square. Nothing but rocks. The wall is riddled with holes. A suffocating stench of long rotten meat wafts out. Oh, well, that sounds delightful. Let's have a closer look. Oh. 
Ah. <laughs> Off to a great start here. But we're, uh, we're capped on inspiration. I think we can spare a point. Nice. You recognize the odor. The foul scent of carrion crawlers. Centipede-like aberrations that feast on the dead. At one time, these caverns must have been their banquet hall. The creatures are either long gone or waiting patiently in the darkness. Ah, okay, so... Not necessarily what emptied out this village. Could just be a symptom of the village being slaughtered. Though it is very much a foreshadowing of things to come. The passage narrows and bends, becoming impassable before you're even elbow deep. You know what? I'm, I'm fine with that. Of the various potential outcomes, that is probably one of the least horrifying. A bone. Dry and brittle. There's nothing left. Empty. Hmm. So carry-on crawlers, huh? Those suckers are nasty. What we need are some lore objects, something to hopefully build some context of what happened here. Splatter diary, that'll do. Maybe Plus a couple of more generic lore books. Not sure if we actually need those or not. Let's see. Illmater, Jurgle, and Kelimvor. No, we've, we've definitely seen that one. That's the death-themed book. And we do need that volume of Approachable East. Spattered Diary. A sturdy book lined with lists, ponderings, and enumerations. A badly charred diary with property of Wolbrin written on the inside cover. In one of the few legible entries, the author wonders if he'll ever see his friend Barkus again now that he's departed for the surface world. Barkus. Yes, uh, Barkus Root. That's the deep gnome we rescued in the Blighted Village. He was, he was tied to the windmill. He did mention he was looking for someone. Perhaps we'll run into him again, though, um, given the state of this place, if this was his final destination, it it doesn't bode well for whatever he might have discovered. So this might be a Spurf Neblin village. Shadow referred to it as a camp, so perhaps a semi-permanent mining camp. Barkus was carrying smoke powder, so perhaps this village, or camp, is a place where the Spurf Neblin mine ingredients and fabricate smoke powder for sale to the surface realm. That would actually make sense, considering that one of the tunnels down here is explicitly a Zentarum trading post, and those guys were loaded to the gills with smoke powder. Yeah, yeah, it all seems to fit. That's either a huge coincidence or some very deliberate world building. And given what I've seen from these guys thus far, I have to really kind of lean towards the ladder. I wonder if that means these, like, glowing gems and stuff are one of the ingredients in smoke powder. I have actually heard that we can smash those to gain small, semi-precious gemstones. I just haven't had the heart to do it yet, since they're so pretty aesthetically. I might. I might circle back and do that on the way out, though. You know, once I'm sure we're never coming back here again. Oh, and we've got corpses. Couldn't see those from where we were before, but yeah, those those definitely look like Swerf Neblin. Also, an Arcane Sigil. So let's make absolute sure we activate that thing. Ooh, executed. And Shattered Dwergar. Plus a water damage letter. Yes, let's get a look at that. 
But based on what we're seeing thus far, it seems pretty straightforward. Dwergar are lawful evil slavers. So they no doubt came across this Svurfneblin mining camp. Met unexpected resistance, possibly because of uh, smoke powder. And then executed the survivors rather than, than taking them as prisoners. Which in turn may be what attracted the carrion crawlers who are no doubt still still lurking here somewhere in the shadows. Ooh, chatty corpse. We'll check that out too. And a bloodstained logbook, fantastic. Water damaged letter. A hastily scrawled letter. A water damaged letter imploring the recipient to be cautious around the far shore of the Ebon Lake as Dwergar are rumored to be prowling in the area. Yep, that tracks. These unfortunate deep gnomes did draw the attention of a Dwergar slaver patrol. I suspect our dead friend over there will confirm at least some of the details for us. Ooh, discarded journal. Okay, yeah, no shortage of lore objects here. We'll start with the Dwergar. The corpse regards you lifelessly. Hey, you're dead. Who were you in life? Hunter, Reaver, warrior of the absolute. Absolute. That's slightly unexpected. And what fate befell you? My goodness made me hurt myself. Right, right, I forgot we have Mykonid stalking the shadows down here. That is also unexpected. I don't suppose you were carrying any vast dwarven riches? Me? <laughs> No, gnomes were fiddling with rubble yonder. Okay, okay. Tell me, um, where did you come from? Across the Ebon Lake. I was really hoping for slightly more than that, but fair enough. Tell me, what were you trying to accomplish when everything went to pieces? Runaway slave. The corpse does not stir. It will answer no more questions. Okay, so slightly more context. The Dwergar patrol was looking for runaway slaves when they chanced upon the Svurfneblin village. They spotted the gnomes messing with rubble, and then I guess laid siege to the place in search of the slaves or... Perhaps hoping to seize new ones only for Mykonids to get involved? The Mykonids are a pretty big curveball. Too loud, sun scum. Heard you stumbling. Can hear you blinking. Noise gets you eaten down here. Reckon I'll hush you before something hungry comes along. His fist grips an axe. On his gnarled gray skin, you see the Absolute's brand. Easy, friend. I'm quite capable of being discreet when need be, and more than capable of defending myself. Fine. I'll let you live. But spoil my hunt, and you're dead. Yeah, well, we've all got to die sometime. So what brings you here to this village of slaughtered gnomes? Told you, hunting. Slave ran away, took Sergeant Thrin's boots. Got to kill the slave and fetch back the leather. Or the bosses in Moonrise will have Thrin's hide. So you'd really run someone down for a pair of boots? Bit of a heel move, don't you think? 
Sergeant told me to. Besides, we're talking about a slave. Oof. Yeah, okay, so... Very, very firmly establishing that Dwergar are, in fact, still lawful evil in 5e. You know, under normal circumstances, I might offer to help, but... I don't much care for slavers. A bleeding heart, are you? Reckon I'll just roast and eat it. No, stop, don't. Well, darn, guess we gotta kill you. Though I did forget that Dwergar have innate magic abilities. Um, invisibility and enlarge, I believe. So we've got four in the mix, loosely surrounding, one invisible. Should be a nice, quick fight. Let's do this. And first things first, let's lay this guy low. He's a bit too high and mighty for my likings. Oh, too heavy. But not for that. My goodness, wow. That... Oh, right, because he landed on the basket. <laughs> my goodness, that was a very, very deadly basket. His fate, unwoven. Ooh, that's awkward. Okay, um... Here? Ugh. Hitbox on that random protrusion is just all over. There we go. Nice. Got it. Novice Garmore at 25%. Let's get lay on Gek Cole. He's got mage armor, so I'm guessing caster. Let my name be known. Nice. Ooh. Whiffed on the stun, but that's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, he's immediately trying to get distance again. Oh, uh, my goodness. No, no thank you. Yes, fantastic. Yeah, that... That would have gotten messy quick. Oh, let's grab that logbook before it gets collateraled. And can we draw a line of sight? Yes. So we can easily finish Gek. Though it's a full turn before he goes again. Maybe we should split focus. Maledictus. Actually, that'll pitch the novice into the void, so let's not. Oh, snap. You know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. With the warden. Oh, wow. Right, right, and we've still got the invisible crossbowman in the mix. Can we cheese his location? Maybe doorway? We're getting some weird bending there.
Yeah, yeah, I think it's... I think it's the doorway near the toppled stool. We'll have someone move to intercept, but... I think the priority needs to be finishing off Gek Cole. Otherwise, things might get a little too animated. My little trick. Oh, come on, Karlak. And that'll do it. It'll be a cold day in hell before I'm bested by the likes of you. We'll save the frenzy. I mean, we're going to rest after this anyway, but I just... I don't really see the point. I'm sorry. In fact, since I'm we are death. about to rest, I think I know exactly what to do with that glyph of warding. No time to waste. Let me just clear our flank. Oh crud. Mud. Mud mucked up my approach. Yeah, I forgot to slap long stride around Lazel before we came down here. Eh, we'll take it. Just hang tight. I wonder if this is worth the cost. Big bonk. Nice. Oh, and uh, Rex. Shoot. Ow. Jeez. Dude. Come on. Dang it. Forgot to tag Rex in. Oh, uh. <laughs> okay, well. Glad to see I'm not the only one having trouble with those hitboxes. All right, Rex, I need you to render this glyph impotent. And hopefully to give this guy his final reward. <laughs> oh shoot, I might have I might have actually blown up loot, but you know what? Totally worth it. Yeah, those uh, those glyphs of warding Best are a double-edged sword, my friend. And now for this ding dong. Nice. All right, let's wrap this up. Lazel could probably finish this guy, but. We won't be caught car lacking. Good idea, Carla. <laughs> Over there. Hi. Who, uh, mind the fire, please? Swift as my feet can carry me. <clears throat> All right, okay. Uh, we are pushing time, but let's let's loot the bodies, clear the courtyard, and uh, yeah, what what the heck? Let's call in shovel. Didn't realize we still had him on tap. Here we go. Exterminator's Axe. A magic great axe with Scourge of Pests. Plus 1d6 fire damage to plants, insects, or small creatures. The intricate engravings on this axe's blade and handle make plain the skill of its smith. 
Plus some other minor consumables. We'll take those. And that was probably our big prize, but let's... Let's poke through the other bodies real quick. Kind of a shame he didn't get that animate dead off. Would have been a rare chance to actually get some use out of Shadow's channeling. They're also innately low dex foes, so in theory we could have gotten some use out of Sacred Flame and that new armor. But I'm sure this is far from our last necromancer. There are bound to be more as we continue our travels. Oh, right, the journal. Yeah, let's grab that. In fact, you know what? We'll uh, we'll go ahead and read those last two lore books before we close out. Let me just check these last few bodies over here. We're actually, building a pretty hefty pile of halfway decent loot. Dwergar antidote. That feels unnecessarily specific. You know, one thing I might do um, is I wasn't planning on it, but I might take dual wielding just so we can wield that uh, strength club in our offhand. You know, just for the sake of our carrying capacity. My original plan was spell sniper, but but I feel like we're not really lacking in the lethality department, so that might that might be literal overkill. But I'll uh, I'll have to give it some thought. And as always, feel free to let me know what you guys think. Oh, interesting. We can actually use their boat. Discarded journal. A diary detailing the daily life of a gnomish village in the Underdark. We threw a surprise party for Ironfoot. How that idiot made it past 150 is a mystery. But it's cause for celebration either way. When he saw the fire whiskey we'd been brewing, I swear he teared up. And only a cup of the stuff, but I can't feel my tongue anymore. The lunatic finished the barrel that night. I have no idea how he made it to his next shift. But Myrna claimed she needed him inside the wagon to guard inventory. The borough warden didn't say a word when the snores started. Lay about as lucky she's got a soft touch. I'd best get some sleep. Orders just came in for practice shovels and pickaxes for the younglings. And I've yet to harvest the zerkwood. Where does the time go? Ah, good. <laughs> and there's our regular dose of depression right on time. But we did get a couple of name drops, Myrna and Ironfoot. Plus a hint that Ironfoot may have survived if he was sleeping off a drunken stupor. Blood Smeared Logbook. A bloody ledger filled with records of precious gems. A ledger detailing the appearance and quality of numerous gemstones that had been mined from rock. Weight, color, clarity, and more are noted next to a sketch of each stone. An underlined entry for a sizable ruby is written in shaky, excited quill strokes. Which might be what they were trying to hide in the rubble. Oh, and I'll, I'll bet we'll be presented with a, a moral conundrum to, uh, to either keep it ourselves or to give it to whatever Swerfneblin may have survived this, this tragic event. And honestly, while I do love building my horde, they set the value on these various treasure items so low. I have no qualms about handing it over to those in need. Plus, I guess I am technically chaotic good, not that alignment's enforced in this game. But we are a hero, more often than not. Aside from, you know, like, the occasional idol theft or questionable husbandry. Alright, folks. I feel like this is a good place to call it. That was actually a halfway decent fight. I mean, might have been more interesting if we'd let them raise those corpses, but... But at the same time, given that we're running on fumes, it's probably best we didn't. That aside, weaponizing that glyph of warding was definitely the highlight of the episode for me. That's it. We'll uh, 
hit the pause button for now. We'll take care of the usual off-screen bookkeeping. And uh, we will pick up here next time. As we pop back to camp, get some rest, and then uh, use that sigil to tag back into the Underdark. I'm honestly really enjoying this area so far, and we haven't even met the fun guy yet. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Revenant, Aloise, Croaking LOR, Dragon Matrix 7, Dracket, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Excelsior, Goatleaf, James Tremay, Kazorm, Mark Gems, and Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. A bleeding heart, are you? Reckon I'll just roast and eat it. <laughs> <laughs>